Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our 2 p.m. worship service online. Ang sarap lang na marinig ang balita no? at uh, nakakatuwang malaman na sa kabila ng pandemic na to, ang gawain ng Diyos ay hinding-hindi mahihinto, no? hindi lamang dito sa bansa natin, pati sa ibang bansa. No? Uh, and that's something that we need to continue to be thankful for. And, uh, continue to remember that God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful in your life. God is faithful uh, sa mga promise niya sa atin. God is faithful sa gawain na pinapagawa niya sa atin and that He will bring success and He will bring fruitfulness sa buhay natin at sa calling natin na nagmumula sa Kanya, yung purpose niya para sa ating buhay. And so, um, I, well, before anything else, my name is Rev Ngapala. For those of you who are here for the first time, I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Fort. And kung first time mo po ngayon, and you've missed um, the preaching last, sun, last Sunday, napakaganda po ng preaching ni Pastor Brian. And so if you can look it up in YouTube or in our Facebook page, ano, ang ganda ng preaching niya last Sunday about um, Romans chapter 3. At ang ganda ng, ng sinabi niya na, let us stop trying to get right with God. No? So pag una mong marinig, parang, ha? Bakit? Because there's really nothing that we can do to get right with God, but just simply to believe that He has already done it for us. Because we cannot do anything, wala tayong maipagmamalaki, there's nothing to boast, no? whether you're religious, whether you're spiritual, you go to church every, every week, sasabihin ko sana, every day, pwede rin. And, or you're an irreligious person, we're all in the same boat, ika nga. Now, some of you might think, yeah, we're on the same boat, pero at least kami nasa first class, kayo nasa economy class. But guess what? The boat is sinking. And there's nothing we can do. Kaya yung salvation natin, yung righteousness natin, hinding-hindi po yan manggagaling sa atin. Yan po ay dahil sa, sa gawa ng Panginoon sa buhay natin nung pinadala niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak na sa si Jesus upang siya ay mabuhay ng perfecto. No? Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, but on the third day, He rose again from the dead. Victorious po ang ating Panginoon. At dun po nakaangkla ang ating pananampalataya. At yun po yung titingnan natin ngayon. Pagpapatuloy natin ang serye natin, The Gospel Explained. The Gospel Explained because the good news of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus is not just confined to a certain historical period. It's not just confined to a church life, ika nga. It emanates, it transcends this good news, this gospel transcends our whole being, our whole lives. And so that's what we're going to look at today in Romans chapter 4. No? That wala po tayong maipagmamalaki sa isa't isa. Wala tayong maipagmamalaki sa Diyos. Uh, ano man ang posisyon natin, uh, anuman ang kataasan nun or anuman ang kababaan nun. We are all on the same boat. And um, Paul said na circumcision is nothing. Hindi, na, hindi maipagmamalaki ng mga hudyo na kami may circumcision. Hindi la, nila maipagmamalaki na kami, meron na kaming law na galing sa, 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 Diyos, sa Diyos mismo. No, galing kay God mismo. Hindi nila maipagmamalaki yon. Bakit? Because none of us will be able to be saved. No, none of us are saved by obeying the law because hindi natin kaya. And ang ganda nito is that kung anuman ang pangako ng Diyos sa atin, kung anuman ang pangako niya matutupad not because of what we can do, but because of what He has done. Yan. Sabi niyo, the promise of God will be fulfilled in my life because of what God has done. Hindi po dahil sa ability natin. At yun po ang kagandahan na pag sinabi nating promise, no? Pag sinabi nating promise ni God, meron po itong katuparan. Ito po yung pangako na hindi napapako. Bakit? Dahil ang katuparan nito, ang kabayaran nito ay pinako na 2000 years ago para maging totoo ang pangako ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Amen. Ganda po. Alam ko po na pag minsan, pag sinasabi nating promise, na naiisip natin yung mga promises na binigay sa atin nung maliit tayo. Nung tayo ay lumalaki at minsan yun yung pagkakaintindi natin. No? Pag sinabing promise, ah, para makuha ko yung promise, kailangan may gawin ako. Naalala nyo ba yung dati nung sinabi sa inyo ng magulang nyo na, anak, kung magiging first owner ka, yan. 
Ibibili kita ng paborito mong laruan. Ganun. Alam mo, sobrang tipid po ng mga magulang ko sa akin. Sobrang tipid po nila. Hindi po ako naging first owner ever. Okay? Kaya, I- I'm sure they're proud of me kasi matipid na bata ako. Kahit anong pangako nila, hindi ko nagagawa. Okay? Pero, ganun po yung pagkaintindi natin na pag sinabi natin may pangako ang Diyos, kasi ano kaya yung gagawin ko? Ano yung, para ma-earn ko yung promise na yun. But you know, in the Bible, that's not it. Because in Romans chapter 4 verse 3, it says, For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be the heir of the world did not come through the law but through the righteousness of faith. Ganun po pala yun. Kaya, anuman ang pangako ng Diyos sa atin, lalong-lalo na yung pangako ng kaligtasan, maari po nating panghawakan yun. Because it's not about how well we do things. It's not about our performance. It's true faith. Sabi niyo yan, faith. It's true faith. No? And clearly, here's the thing about the promise of God. Clearly, faith for us to partake of the promise, for us to enjoy the promise in our lives. May pangako ang Diyos. We move in faith, in pananampalataya. Tama? But clearly, faith is our response to the promise of God. Faith is our res- response to the plan of God. Faith is our response to the direction of God. Kasi minsan napag, napag-iiba natin. Minsan, faith becomes for us a way to make God promise us that He will follow the direction for our plans. No, napagkakabaliktad natin. Faith, response po natin yan sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Kasi minsan pag hindi natin naintindihan, ginagawa natin yung faith na pasundin ang Diyos sa kagustuhan natin. No? Na pag sinabi mo na, Lord, may faith ako, Lord, na ako'y pagyayamanin mo. At gagawin mo ang lahat para lang yumaman, kahit yung malina. Pero ang sasabihin mo kay God, Lord, may faith ako eh, kaya gagawin mo to para sa akin. Hindi po yun. Faith is this. Ano ba yung sinabi ni God? Susundan ko yun. Yun ang faith. Kaya sa Romans chapter 3, or Romans chapter 4, in verse 3 it says, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. May sinabi si God, naniwala si Abraham. Okay? May gusto si God, may plano si God, pinaniwalaan ni Abraham yun. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Yun yung faith. Hindi yung may sasabihin ka kay God at Lord dahil may faith ako, gawin mo to. That's not faith. Eto yung faith. May sinabi si God, susundin natin. Paniniwalaan natin. Yan ang faith. Yan ang tinatawag na faith to believe. And sometimes, we think that our faith to believe God for salvation is different. Hanggang dun lang yun. Lord, yung faith ko nito to believe you for salvation dito na. Ngayon, to live my life, I need something else. That's not the gospel. Because the gospel is this. It's not just the entryway. It is from A to Z. It's not just the A, B, C. It's not just the first part of your life. It's your whole life. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng gospel. Kaya kailangan po nating maintindihan para pag sinabi nating pananampalataya, pag sinabi nating faith, totoo po yung pagkakaintindi at pagkakapamuhay natin sa pananampalataya na yun. Our faith in Jesus for salvation is not detached from the faith that we have to face life circumstances. Parehas po yun. Nakakaakibat po dun. Nakaangkla dun lahat ng ginagawa natin sa buhay natin. Nakaangkla sa pananampalatay natin sa Panginoon. Kaya may security tayo dahil sa promise ni God. Kaya may hope tayo because of God's promise. Kaya may, may peace tayo because of what Jesus has done for us and what He continues to do for us, in us, and through us. Faith is not a ticket or an entryway to heaven. Faith understands that Jesus is not just a 
a sacrifice to get to heaven, that God is not a tour guide for heaven. No, faith understands this, that our whole lives, pag-aari na ng Panginoon. That Jesus is both Lord, not just for salvation, not just for paradise, but for our entire life. Yun pong ibig sabihin. Kaya nga, minsan siguro, nahirapan tayo. Could it be that the reason why we are so out of God's plan in our lives is because we had a faulty view of faith. Na pag faith yan, pang langit lang yan. Pero sa buhay ko, akong kailangan dumiskarte. I have to earn it. You are saved by grace through faith. Do you believe that? And you are also blessed by grace through faith. Amen? Faith will transcend our whole everyday lives. Jesus is not just at, not, well actually, Jesus is not our ticket. Jesus is Lord. Okay? Hindi ticket ang Diyos papunta sa paraiso o sa, kal- sa langit. Siya ang Panginoon. Okay? And speaking of that kind of faith, how does that look like now in the life of a believer? Pag sinabi mong mananampalataya ka, sumusunod ka sa Panginoong Jesus, how does that faith look like sa buhay natin? Ano ang kailangan nakikita? Pag nakikita ng mga tao ang pananampalataya natin, ano ang nakikita ang pananampalataya sa buhay ng mga mananampalataya? Ano yun? Because the promise depends on faith. Yan yung titingnan natin ngayon. In Romans 4 verse 16, let's start with that. It says, that is why it depends on faith, the promise. In order that the promise may, may rest on grace and be guaranteed. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, guaranteed. Sigurista ka ba? Eto yun. Garantisado. Guaranteed. To all his offsprings, not only to the adherent of the law, the Jews, the Israelites, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. And that is the faith that we're going to look at and the faith that we need. You know, because it's a faith from first to last. Yan sinasabing we are walking by faith. It starts with faith. We are sustained by faith. And we are going to see God by faith as well. At dapat, pag sinabi natin by faith, naiintindihan natin that it's about God. Siya ang, siya ang namumuno, tayo yung sumusunod. Iba? Hindi yung, alam mo yan, minsan ginagamit natin to by faith lang, by faith. Narinig nyo na ba yun? May asawa, ka, may asawa na, may nakitang iba, Lord, siguro by, pinagtagpo mo talaga kami. Kaya by faith, Lord, maniniwala ako na may gagawin ka para kami ang magkatuluyan. Kahit may asawa ka na. No? Or ikaw marahil ay anak at nasa puder ka pa ng mga magulang mo no sana hindi ka na, hindi ka pa sana hindi ka na 50 years old no but anyway nasa puder ka pa ng mga magulang mo and then sa may may, may pinapagawa sa iyo magulang mo may direction na binigay sa buhay mo bakit e, high school ka pa lang eh high school ka pa lang dude tapos sasabihin mo ayoko nang mag-aral ayoko nang sumunod sa inyo by faith okay ka lang hindi yon faith no, katigasan yun ng ulo natin. Do you understand me? Eto yung faith. May pangako si God. Pangahawakan natin dahil sinabi niya, hindi lang dahil kagustuhan natin. Yan ang titingnan natin. When we look at anong klaseng pananampalataya ang dapat nakikita sa isang mananampalataya. And we'll, we'll go to Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Three things na kailangan mak... Na pag sinabi mong eto, faith talaga to, eto, titingnan natin. Ah, so eto pala dapat ang nakikita sa pananampalataya ko. Romans 4 verse 18, In hope, he believed. He's talking about Abraham. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. Anong context nito? Si Abraham, pinangakuan ng Diyos. I will bless you. Nations will be blessed through you. You will be blessed to be a blessing. 
Whoever blesses you, I will bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And through you, through your offspring, nations will be blessed. That is the gospel actually. And because the fulfillment of that promise is Jesus Christ, and because of Jesus, all nations are blessed because of Christ. Because salvation is now based on the promise, not based on our works. Kaya bless tayo. Yun yung ibig sabihin nito. But merong problema. Sabi dito, in hope he believed against hope. In hope he believed against hope. Ano ibig sabihin nun? May pangako ang Diyos, pero ang realidad ni Abraham, hindi tugma sa pangako ni, ni God. Para bang may pangako si God sa atin na, I am your healer. Pero may sakit ka. May kakilala kang may COVID ngayon. Ma- maaring ikaw, may COVID ka ngayon. Maari naghihintay ka ng resulta. Mahal mo sa buhay, naghihintay ng resulta at hindi nyo alam kung ano yung gagawin. Lord, totoo ba yung pangako mo? E, eto yung sitwasyon namin. But it says here, in hope, he believed against hope. Sabi ni God, I am the provider. Pero wala kang trabaho ngayon. At hindi ka naman tamad, nag-iisip ka ng mga ibang business, nag a ka, pero wala talagang pumapasok. In hope, will you still believe against the hope of your reality? That is faith. To believe against hope, not because we're deluded, not because we're saying, hindi totoo ang nangyayari sa paligid ko, but because we know na kahit totoo ang mga realidad na to, mas makapangyarihan ang ating Diyos. Amen? Mas makapangyarihan ang ating Diyos. Sabihin mo yan sa katabi mo. Kung wala kang katabi, itype mo na lang. Sayang din naman, walang makakaalam na sinabi mo. Kaya una, kailangan ma- maintindihan natin, faith keeps on what? Faith keeps on holding on to God's promise. Faith keeps on holding on to God's promise even in the face of seeming impossibilities, even in the face of impossibilities. Lord, ang promise mo, ang pangako mo, you have, you have a plan for us, plan to prosper us, plan to give us hope, plan to give us life, not to harm us. Naka-pandemic kami ngayon. Paano yan? Akala pa natin, magiging MGCQ na. Excited ang mga, maga, ma, mga, ano, mga gusto nang gumala kasi akala nilang MGCQ, mas gala. Hindi po ang MGCQ, ibig sabihin may virus pa rin po yun. Kaya kailangan pa rin po natin mag-iingat. But that's what faith is. It holds on to God's promise even in the face of impossibilities. Now, it does not deny the reality. Faith faces the facts. It does not deny the reality. Okay? But it holds on to God's truth. It holds on to God's truth. Anong problema, ano ang impossibility kay Abraham nung sinabi ni God sa kanya, you will be the father of many nations. Your offsprings will be like uh, the number of the, of the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. Ano yung problema niya? In Romans 4.19, ito yung impossibility na kinakaharap ni Abraham. He did not waken in faith when he considered his own body which was as good as dead. I think he was like what? Old. No, no, no. Actually, Abraham was not old. He was very old. Hindi siya old. Okay? He was very old. A hundred years. A hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Double wami. A hundred years old na siya. And guess what? Si Sarah, baog. Hindi pwedeng magka-anak. Tiningnan, nag-MRI na, ng CT scan, nag-test lahat. Nag-in vitro, wala. Walang possibility na magka-anak. But what did Abraham do? He hold, held on to God's word. He held on to God's promise. Because he knows anuman ang impossibility, ang mga impossibilidad na nakikita niya ngayon, mas makapangyarihan ang Diyos doon. That God had the power to do what He was going to say. What are the seeming impossibilities sa buhay natin ngayon? What are the seeming impossibilities sa contrary siya sa promise ni God sa buhay natin? Ano mga imposible sa buhay mo na salungat sa pangako ng Diyos sa'yo? When it comes to your marriage, perhaps. When it comes to your spouse, 
May unfaithfulness ba? Wala bang unfaithfulness pero parang nagkakalamigan na kayo? Will you hold on to God's promise? That as you walk by faith, as you surrender your marriage to Him, He will restore you. He will put life in your marriage. Paano yung mga anak natin na parang feeling natin, God, tinuturuan ko naman to ng tama eh. Pero bakit puro mali ang gusto? Parang imposible nang magbago. Huwag mong sabihin yan. Huwag mong paniwalaan yan. Dahil makapangyarihan ang Diyos na sinasamba mo. Makapangyarihan ang Diyos na sinusunod mo. Makapangyarihan ang Diyos na pinapanampalatayaan mo. Ano yung mga impossibilities ngayon sa buhay natin? Health, provision, finances, restoration, righteousness, impossibility ba sa'yo na parang mong feeling mo, Lord, parang hindi na kita talaga masusunod. Parang wala, wala na akong pag-asa, talagang talamak na makasalanan na ako. Mas makapangyarihan ng Diyos. At may plano pa rin siya ng pagpapala at ng kaligtasan sa buhay mo. Ano mga impossibilities natin ngayon? Lord, akala ko ba pinagpala ang bayan na sumusunod sa iyo? Bakit ganun? Parang there's insecurity in our nation right now. May anti-terror bill tayo and stuff like that. Mas makapangyarihan ng Diyos. Hinding-hindi tayo pababayaan ni God. Let me assure you that God will be true. Kaya nga sabi sa Romans 4.20, No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in the faith as he gave glory to God. He grew strong. Ibig sabihin, nung pinangakuan siya ng Panginoon, sa buhay niya, lumalago ang pananampalataya. Hindi detached yung una niyang pag. pag, pag Una niyang pagpaniwala. Hindi detached sa buhay niya when he first believed God. Hindi yung, ah, event lang yan sa buhay ko. No, it drove his life. The promise of God drove, directed his life. And I pray that the promise of God will drive and direct and compel and fuel our lives as well. Nandun yung joy natin, nandun yung peace natin, nandun yung strength natin. You want your strength or your, your faith to grow stronger? Gusto mong lumago sa pananampalataya? Guess what? Bigyan mo ng kaluhalatian ng Diyos. Glorify God. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, mag-worship ka kay God. Ginagawa mo ba yon? Hindi lamang dito. Pero personally, do you worship God? Do you give Him your all? You pray to God. You meditate on His Word. Balik-balikan mo, nandun yung pangako. You repent. Talikuran mo yung kasalanan. Kasi minsan sasabi natin, may faith ako kay God. Gusto ko lumagi yung faith ko kay God. Pero ayaw naman natin siyang sundin. Hindi pwede. Nagkakalokohan tayo. At eto pa, hinding-hindi mo maloloko si God. Tama? So how do you glorify God? Repent, live in obedience. Hold on. Impossible ba? Hold on to His promise. Grow in faith. Sunod ka, little steps, little steps of faith, little steps of obedience. Here and there, at mapapansin mo, your faith becomes stronger. Bakit? Kasi mas lalo mong nakikilala ang Diyos. Hindi dahil ang galing mo, kundi nakikita mo ang galing ang bait, ang tapat ng Diyos sa atin. And of course, Abraham was also fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Faith, then, in our lives, not, not only are we fully convinced that God is able to save us, but that God is able to grow us, sustain us, work in us, work, do His work for us, and use our lives to be a blessing to others. Fully convinced ka ba sa kakayahan ng Diyos mo? Fully convinced ka ba na walang imposible sa Kanya kahit may mga imposible sa buhay natin? Fully convinced ka ba na bago, kaya Kanyang baguhin? Ba, kaya Kanyang baguhin ang sitwasyon mo? 
Kaya niyang bigyan ng bagong direksyon ang asawa mo, ang mister mo, ang misis mo. Ang pamilya mo, kaya niyang buuin. Ang puso mo, kaya niyang baguhin para ikaw ay makapagpatawad at makapag-move on. Doon sa nagsabing, hintayin mo lang daw siya hanggang ngayon wala pa. Meron na palang iba. Fully convinced ka ba na mahihil ka ni God? And you can live a life to the full once again. Fully convinced ka ba na mababago ng Diyos ang buhay mo? Ang biyanan mo, hindi ko alam. Yes, of course. Why not? At sabi rin naman ng biyanan mo, paano naman yung hipag ko? Ay, yung manugang ko. Ano? Para fully convinced ba ako doon? And I pray this, whatever your situation is, you are fully convinced. God is able. And that's why Paul said, he continued to write in Romans 22 and 422. That is why that is why faith was counted to him as righteousness. Because that righteousness did not just affect his entry to heaven, ikanga, but his whole life. And in Romans 3, 4, 23 to 24, it says, But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone. It's not just for Abraham, but for us also. It will be counted to us who believe. Do you believe God? Do you believe na his, not, his plan is not just for you to go to heaven, but for your life here on earth to matter for His glory? It's going to be a great life. For us who believe in Him who raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord. And guess what? You know, alam mo kung bakit ako fully convinced dito. Alam mo kung bakit I keep on holding on to God's promise. Kahit nagkakamali ako, bumabalik lang ako sa Kanya. Yung kahit nagkakasala ako, kahit may mali akong desisyon, bumabalik lang ako kay God because nothing is impossible. Hindi po imposible bumalik sa Diyos. Dahil ibinigay na po niya ang tatak ng kanyang garantiya sa atin. And that mark is when He gave Jesus to be delivered up for our trespass and He was raised again for our justification. That when we are, when God looks at us, He, is, he loves to bless us. He has already given us the greatest blessing. And so lastly, I don't want us to forget this. Faith is not just being fully convinced that God is able. Faith is being fully convinced that God is willing because He loves you, because He cares for you. Whatever impossibilities in our lives, guess what? Mas makapangyarihan ang Diyos. Amen? Wag po tayong patatalo. Hindi po tayo matatalo sa mga sitwasyon natin sa buhay dahil nasa atin na ang kaligtasan na ipinangako ng Diyos at ang kalakasan ng pananampalataya na binibigay niya sa atin araw-araw. And so as we end this worship service, I just want to take this time for us to once again worship God. To just cry out and be reminded, God, napakabait mo, napakabuti mo. And for some of us, if not all of us, to take this step of faith to repent, turn away from sin, and surrender our lives fully to God. Because salvation, faith, grace, it's not just a decision that you've made in the past. It's a life that you live out every day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace that sustains us. Thank you for the grace that saves us because of what Jesus has done for us. And thank you for reminding us that your word is true. You are able and you are willing to bless, to heal, to restore, to cleanse us, to give us new direction, to give us a fullness of life and a new life, a new heart. To give us a life, Lord God, of obedience and righteousness for your glory, for your name's sake. And so we worship you, Lord. We worship you. More than wanting the provision, the healing, we want you. Remind us of your goodness and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God.
We believe you, God. Who you were. Who you were is who you are. Who you are, you always will be. Seated in the highest place. are the unshakable king. Kaya po kami nakakasiguro sa aming pananampalataya. Kaya po kami nakakasiguro na ang pangako mo ay hindi mapapako, Panginoon. That it will be fulfilled because you are unshakable. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you will not change your mind to love us, to forgive us, to heal us, to transform us, Lord God, to take us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your son. Lord, may we take this to heart that our faith will will not deny the realities but we will continue to hold on to your word. We will continue to hold on to your promise even in the face of impossibilities. Lord, may we be a people who will grow in our faith because we are following you. At sa mga panahon, Panginoon, na kami ay nadadapa, na, na kung saan saan napupunta kasalanan ang sinusundan at hindi ikaw Lord may we come to repentance because we want to grow in faith as we honor you and glorify you may we be fully convinced God that you are able and that you are willing to do what you have promised pinagdadasal ko ang lahat ng mga marriages Panginoon pinagdadasal ko ang kanilang ang kalakasan ng kanilang pagsasama, ng pananampalataya, ng pag-ibig, ng pagpapatawad, Panginoon. Pinagdadasal ko yung mga nagsasama ngayon, Panginoon, na hindi pa kasal. Lord, I pray for repentance. I pray that they will step out in faith. That they will honor you within their relationship, Lord God. They will honor you, God. They will follow you. Hindi yung Sasabihin nila, by faith, magsama tayo. Maintindihan ni God, Lord, but by faith, we will honor you. We will repent. We will turn away from sin. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, that by faith, you are able and you are willing to heal. We pray for those who are in need, that by faith, you are able and you are willing to provide. We pray, Lord God, for those relationships in the family that has been hurt, wounded, broken. We believe that you are able and willing to restore. So we walk in it. We rejoice in it. And we glorify you in it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. If you need prayers, please do email me, rev at victoryfort.org and Once again, we're still in GCQ, so please continue to be blessed, but stay safe, do good, and keep praying. We'll see you this prayer and fasting, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. God bless.
bless your week.